All right, so hi everyone, my name is Casey Anko. So I guess um, we'll just be talking a little bit about the pathway design software which you might use in some of your upper level courses, uh, either in undergrad or then in grad school when you're designing you know, PCBs, but then we also have a bunch of other things that we can walk through. Um, I guess to give me an idea of where we want to go low, we want to name the presentation, who here is like a freshman level? All right, and then what about sophomores? All right. Juniors, seniors, all right, and then grad students, all right. And are y'all masters or PhDs? Masters. 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 All right. Perfect. All right. Well, cool. Well, we have a wide range of experience levels here, so it'll be great. Um, and so, um, has anyone ever heard of Keysight before? All right. Cool. <laughs> all right. So a couple of y'all. So has anyone heard of a company named Agilent? All right. Good. What about a company, a small company named Fuel Packer? All right. Well, I hope everyone's heard of Fuel Packer. But um, so HP actually started back in um, 1939. They were um, a pure play electronics customer management company. And you guys don't happen to know who their first customer was, do you? Okay. So uh, they started in 1939, and their first customer was actually Walt Disney uh, for the movie uh, Fantasia. So uh, Walt Disney really wanted to have uh, sound in the theaters, um, and so he wanted uh, he commissioned Keysight to create audio oscillators for them to make that possible. And so, um, so that's where we got our start. And then over the years, uh, HP became big into you know the you know, computers, printers, consumer electronics, and so the electronics custom measurement uh, part of the business you know uh, took second. You know, second rate to that, and so then we spun off the electronics to become Agilent Technologies, and then through another name change, we became Keysight about seven years ago. And so we at Keysight, we don't make consumer electronics, so you're never going to go to Best Buy and buy a Keysight phone. But if you think of your iPhone or your Samsung phone, we make devices that test every single component in that device. So all the way from like the silicon chips all the way to you know how the data flows to make sure that there's no bits or anything that's, that's dropped or lost. And then we also and then also you know on the power transfer and the wireless side of it. So everything that makes the phone work, we have a hand in you know designing. Um, and so we are also big into in the simulation realm. So a lot of times now you're not only going to you know throw some transistors on a breadboard theoretically and see how it works because a lot of our systems that we're designing now you know, if you think about 5G or quantum, they're going to be much more complex than you can fit on a small circuit board. And so, since 85, uh, Keysight has um, been into the, what we call the electronic design and automation uh, business, and so that's going to be everything that, it's kind of like, the, you know, you've heard of CAD with SolidWorks, like seeing that visually. The EDA is kind of that from the electronics side of it. So seeing how the, the you know, the currents flow, how the, how the, how the antenna radiates, and things like that. And so, uh, we've been in this business for it's like almost 40 years now, and so uh, we're pretty big in the space, and then, um, yeah, and so we previously were called ESOP, which was really creative. It was electrical engineering software, so, you know. Uh, but a couple years ago, uh, we added a, a sub-brand to call Pathway, and so, you know, are, is anyone familiar with the, um, you know, the design cycle that you go through as an engineer? All right. So, I mean, again, what are, what do you think are some of the typical, you know, oh, yeah. steps? Yeah, right. I didn't realize that it was on there. So, uh, you know, in you know, design cycles, you'll start with, you know, you'll get, you'll get some specs. You need to create an amplifier with this, you know, this gain with this noise level, or X, Y, and Z. And you'll need to, uh, that's where you'll come in on the left, so then you'll design that, and then you'll simulate it, and then you'll need to make sure that the design works, so you'll validate it. Um, I'm not actually sure what this one is, but then you'll test it. So, oh, maybe this is connecting different components together. And then you'll test it to make sure that everything works. And if you extract this further, then you'll go into like the production side of it, so to make sure that as you mass produce your amplifier, you're still getting the same specs that you expect. And so when you go through this design process as an engineer, between each you know, different step, there's a lot of data that can get lost. 
because you know sometimes file formats aren't compatible. If you export from a software you're using to design those circuit, and then you go to do your say you're doing your like your, uh, electromagnetic simulation, some stuff might get lost between step A and step B. And so Pathwave is just an overall brand that has this common architecture that uh, allows you to go seamlessly through the design cycle. So that you can go all the way from the beginning of it to the end without having to redo any of the steps. And so if we focus just on the first two steps, the Pathwave Design and Simulation, that's where this sort of club comes in. And so I manage our, uh, or our Pathwave Design University program. And so we make all of this software available to universities um, for, well, essentially free, um, so that you as students can understand how or you can go into the workforce being in what we call industry ready. So you'll, you know, you'll start as like an RF engineer or an antenna engineer or you know, something similar like that. And from day one on the job, you'll know, hey, I want to go ahead and uh, I know exactly how to you know, run this simulation and your boss will have to spin up. Typically, from the research that we've conducted, it typically takes about a year for an engineer to be comfortable in their, uh, that first position to get used to the, you know, the differences between you know, under, or graduate school or undergrad and the work life, or um, with you know, simulation and test, and just to get used to how that, that runs. And so the goal of this program is to make sure that once you enter the workforce, you're ready to go, and then you can be a productive engineer, which will also help you because then you can get a better job, you can get, you can negotiate, you know, like a higher salary and things like that because you know more of what, what you're, what you're working with. And so, um, our EDA tools, and we'll talk a little bit about just that from a high level about a couple of them, but they're used by, uh, you know, everyone from, you know, all of the iPhone manufacturers, you know, stuff for what was it, uh, the RFIC and the RF module and one of the and, and the iPhones and um, then you, you know, you think about like pathway system design, right there, um, and that's used by uh, the 5G, what is it, the, the, the chipset manufacturer, by all of the major 5G chipset manufacturers. And so it's real industry software that you'd actually use in the workforce. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then also this part right here, which if you ever take, um, I think it's um, Professor Shankar's uh, or uh, Dr. Liu's, uh, what's it, RF course, uh, you might have uh, also used some network analyzers. And so that's going to be in the testing realm of that diagram that we talked about on the last page. And so that's, we added a DNA simulator in there so that you can, without having access to the equipment, you can at least you know, fiddle around with it and see how it works. So any questions so far? We have a couple more slides to sort of give a, a wrap up on each of the different applications. Is there anything I missed? Was awesome. All right. Yeah. All right. So um, the Pathway of Advanced Design System, or ADS, is going to be um, that's going to be your more of your low level application. So it'll, it'll be more of your circuit simulation. So if you think of um, what you use for like maybe like PSPICE or PSEM to do just basic circuit layouts and like a you know like an electronics or maybe like an intro to engineering sort of course. Um, ADS is kind of like that, but more focused on RF. And so you can do everything from the component level all the way up to uh, you know, the amplifier or like the, the device level. And so this allows you to do um, just basic you know, time domain analysis or frequency domain analysis. But then you can also do some electromagnetic analysis. So if you think of uh, like the motherboard on your PC, for example, uh, they had to test that to make sure that it's not that once you turn the computer on, it's not going to, you know, knock your Wi-Fi out because because it's radiating. And so that's where ADS would come in handy because it can uh, do the electromagnetics on that those devices to make sure that it's working properly. Um, and then ADS also works in conjunction with our EM design software. Part of this EM design software is actually brought into ADS to do a good amount of just the electromagnetic simulation, and then. The, um, where EM Pro really uh, is really used is going to be on the like antenna course. So if you're ever thinking about you know designing like a really big like uh, you know TV antenna, like the big Yagi antennas that have like the, the, the spikes going out, you would use something like 
got a PM designed to, to figure that out. And then, um, let's see, let's go to... And then if you, you know, scale up a little bit and you go to the system level, then that's where system view comes in handy. So if you're thinking of modeling, for example, like a 5G system, so you want to model the, the transmitter, what sends out the signal, so um, if you want to, you know, start by uh, creating a signal and then uh, going through your modulation and everything, adding in some noise so that it's not a perfect signal, and then taking it out to transmit out, and then analyzing it, that's where you would use system view. Instead of ADS, which would, you know, ADS would allow you to simulate, like, that device right there, system allows you to simulate a bunch of those devices connected so that you can make sure that if, you know, you have this amplifier followed by a filter or something that it's not going, that you're getting the expected results and you're not going to, um, uh, you know, make it so that it's inoperable or make sure that they're, that the frequencies are lining up so that you're not, you know, take, that your filter doesn't get rid of all of the frequency constants that you want for your amplifier. All right, and then um, if we go to the DNA simulator side, and so um, all of that stuff that we talked about was going to be like on the design and simulation side of it. And then if you talk about the test side of it, you would usually use, for an amplifier for example, you would usually want to test it on a network analyzer. And so is anyone here familiar with network analyzers or use them before? All right. So for those of you that aren't, it's essentially, what it does is you hook up, um, say you have an amplifier right here and it has two ports, like an input and an output. You want to make sure that whatever signal you send into the amplifier, you know, gets amplified by the time it gets to the output. So we use something like a network analyzer to uh, test that device because um, you can, you want to test its responses. So what you would do is the network analyzer sends a signal into the input and then, it sent, and then that signal would hopefully go through and you'd receive it on the output. And so the network analyzer allows you to see uh, how much of the signal went through the device, what was the signal level, did, it actually, did the signal actually get bigger on the output, and then the other part that it wants to test is if it's sending something through the input, is how much of the power is getting like reflected back and you know, hitting the front of the network analyzer. And so that's some you know, pretty good RF hardware. That, uh, that a, you know, a TRF lab would have. But if you don't have access to that, that's where this you know, DNA simulator would come in handy so that you can get a feel for it using the same, you know, uh, the same button pushes and the same, you know, it, it simulates the instrument noise and everything so that you can get an idea of how it would work when you hook up your, you know, your simulated device to the system. So, yeah. So that was my brief presentation for everyone. Uh, did anyone have any questions? All right. Can you show like employers that you know how you use ADS? Is there any certification program? We do have an RF certification program. We're working with um, a couple of the professors to get UT to be part of the program. It's stuck in the planning university bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but yeah, so the RF certification program. Let me see if I can find a slide that that sort of talks about that. Um. Oh, So, yeah, so the RF certification program, oh, that's me. That's, uh, that thing in the middle there on the left is uh, a network analyzer. That's one of the more expensive ones. But what we're doing in here is we're testing uh, two antennas. So we're testing to see how this, uh, this antenna is performing. So the signal's going in through this antenna. And then it's going across to see uh, using, we know how this one performs. So therefore, because we know how one performs, we can extract how the other one's performing. So that's using a network analyzer. And then this is a little uh, radar that we made out of some RFIC components and then two uh, copy cans. But, so the RF certification program, 
we have about 40 uni universities participating, and then eventually we'll add hopefully an IBT into this uh, program. But essentially, what you have to do is to be you know good for the certification program, you have to understand the whole design place. So you need to understand both the design part of it and then how to use uh, you know the RF equipment. And so what this program does is it certifies that e-site stamp of approval is on your uh, is on you as a student, so that you so that the, uh, the university um, hiring or the people that are hiring from the universities can know how that this person has this set of criteria here, and so that will be you know defined by the professors. So yeah, Let's see if I have another slide or anything in here. Yeah, so that's about it uh, in terms of the university certification. But did you want me to show like a little bit of like EDS? I'd like, uh, I'd like to if you talk to any courses that you see that would use these equipment. Yeah, so um, right now we're working with them to get um, like RF gear into the RF lab, right? Or at least from what um, those professors have told us is that traditionally the focus is really heavy on the theory. So it's usually like book focus. You know, you understand the equations, but you don't really go hands on with the equipment. Or with um, like simulation, and so they're rewriting that curriculum to use um, ADS as uh, the main one, and then also some piecing here, so some meta analyzers. So yeah, so fingers crossed that that gets you know we get that done soon. But but yeah, so it's currently uh, working its way through the through the um, W department and the, the university as well. Anyone else have any questions? Okay. Well, let's just take your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then do you want to um, do your thing and then I can just show a little bit of the ADS? Or do you want to do that now? Or? Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. So, um, we'll just, so I just have a, couple, a quick simulation of what, what you would actually do with ADS. Okay, is this working now? Yeah, okay, so um, inside of ADS, this is just, uh, this is an example. Like we have, I wrote an example guide, about 10 chapters long, that goes through different parts of, uh, the, of an RF port. So one of them is creating an antenna, and so, uh, you know, your phone doesn't, it has a bunch of antennas already built into it because the antennas that, you know, ideally the antenna would be, you know, not huge, but it would be not integrated into here, so you can get really, you know, really good performance. But uh, there's a bunch of different types of antennas, and the, one of the smallest ones is going to be, well, he did be able to say it, it's, it's more than my hand, but it's going to be a patch antenna. And so if you think of like a PCB, um, the, a patch antenna has, um, on the top, it has copper that is etched in such a way, and then the signal goes into the copper and then radiates out. And so that would look something like this. And so this is just a really basic patch antenna. And so this is, the feed line that's going in right there, so your signal will go in, and then once it hits here, it'll sort of disperse out. So some of the signal will go this way, some of it will go around the corner, and then as it gets, um, uh, it'll it'll radiate, and then as it gets to the edge, it'll it'll keep radiating. And so there's a couple different types of simulations you'll want to perform on this kind of thing. One of them will be just a basic. This is these are what we call S parameters. Uh, and so, um, if we're thinking about an antenna, it's, it's a one-port device, so you have that, that port hooked up to your VNA, and the VNA will go into, the signal will go into the port of the antenna, and then right here, we can tell that right here, because we don't want to have anything reflect back. If it's all reflecting back, that's what it's doing right there, and then um, if it's all reflecting back, none of it's going into the antenna, so it's not actually radiating. So what we have right here is you can see that in 2.4 gigahertz, there is nothing going back into the system, which means that it's radiating out. And so we can also do an electromagnetic analysis. So we can see here, um, we can see uh, this is the antenna. And so the signal's going in right here. And then it's going up here. You can see that it's blue, so it's fairly low power. But then by the time it gets out here, 
then you can see the power starts to get into this green, yellow, and red area. So that's so these are going to be your hottest spots, which is no coincidence that it's along the edge, but it's also no coincidence that it's right around this corner. Um, and so uh, this just gives you sort of an idea of how how it looks like the hot spot of uh, how the, the current looks on the device. And then this is uh, the far field of the antenna. And so you can see, uh, essentially, this is showing you the, the shape of the radiation pattern. So it's, uh, yeah, so it should look like that. And so as the signal is going in this way, then it's radiating out in almost all directions. Sometimes it'll be, it'll look more like a straight line, like maybe instead of radi radiating out in all directions, it might only radiate out like this much, just depending on the specific type of antenna. So, yeah, so this is at 2.4 gigahertz, and you can see that if we were to switch to 2.1 gigahertz, you can see that the shape of the antenna might look the same, but you can see that there's not much power there because that's not what it's designed for. And then, same with 2.7 gigahertz. So, yeah, so that's sort of a, just a basic overview of like ADS, the layout, like a PCB of it, and then how it looks in the in doing a CM analysis. So, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You could, you know, simulate like a whole, you know, computer motherboard or FPGA, um, anything like that in here. And so those are some of our big areas that, we're, that customers, or commercial customers are using. Yeah. So I'm wondering if you can show us how you can make a change in this antenna. Because all the antenna typically designed by it's really hard to change. We have to go into some text input. So I'm just wondering how easy it is. Yeah, so, yeah, so, um, what we can do, so if you go in here, so there's a couple of different ways that you can sort of create uh, an antenna. What I did here was actually just, where is it? Uh, right here, it's just creating a polygon. So I just created a, you know, drew this figure. Uh, I, I think I actually did like more pointing to, like I said, a zero, zero, put it here, and I put one over here, and up here. And then you just put your port anywhere in there. So if you wanted to say, I want to change the shape, I want to change the height, then I can just, you know, you just go like that, change the shape. Um, so that's one way of creating an antenna or, you know, a, a, a microstrip or a PCB. But then you can't really see it from over there, but there's a bunch of components over here. And so uh, let's see if I can pop this out. Uh, so I guess this doesn't make it much better for you, but you can see here. So there's going to be some, where's the end layer? So here's just a microstrip line. So let's say you were making uh, just like a filter or something, like uh, just a microstrip filter. You might get like a, there's your end line, and then you uh, you would say, I want it to be this parameter by this parameter. And then you can do, there's your curve. You, you can have like a corner or like a, a bend where it's kind of like a curve, but it's straight lines instead of a curve. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. And then, in terms of setting up your EM setup, that's just in here. And so all you can so you can just go in here and say, okay, well, here's the substrate. So right now it's simulating with FR4 and 1.6 millimeters. You can just go and say, okay, well, uh, let's see, is it, is it Yeah, so I can go in here. Um, I can either I can add more layers to it if I want to, or you can just change the conductor that I have is copper. You can change it to just the PEC, the perfectly electrical conductor, aluminum, whatever you want to. You can also change the dielectric, you know, from FR4 to, well, air, but I don't think you'd really want to do that. But you can change it to whatever material you, you, were, you had. And then you can also add, like, a VN that would go, you know, that would connect the two and short the top to the bottom um, or add, you know, add more layers as well. That looks great. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, any other questions? All right, well, cool. Well, I'll just chill in the back and listen to the rest uh, while they're using one. Sure, sure. Give me another hand for Casey. Like, you do each of these individually in their own class, and they all have their own tool. Right. And then the fact that ABS can like streamline them along together. Yeah. And then that's super powerful, too. That toolbar where you can just drop components in, mm -hmm. it's not just like, you don't have to like figure out the geometry and set that right. on your simulator. Right. Or something. 
Yeah, and then you can also like also you can start the schematic and say you you can add all these components into the schematic, and then you can just like, essentially export them and create a layout without having to actually draw the components on board. So yeah, pretty cool.